¡Hola! ¡Buenos días! ¡Buenas noches! Par, ¡Por favor! It is William Calling from Wee Wee Blogs. Levantense, siéntense. Spain has announced that it is internally selecting its act for Eurovision 2020. That means they will not be using Aparacion Triunfo to choose their artist or their song. Shall we talk about it? Let's do this! Yes, it is all giddy up and go, vamanos, all around the Euro fandom. That is because Spain has ended speculation that it might use OT, Operación Triunfo, for a third straight year to choose its Eurovision 2020 act. This comes after, you know, a few unsuccessful years. Domestically, the show was very popular. A lot of people fell in love with a lot of new artists. But for whatever reason, on the scoreboard, Spain continues this trend of being near the bottom. It's been a long time since Spain was in the top 10. That was way back in 2014 with Ruth Lorenzo. Ever since then, they have been, let us look, 21st or lower. Ederne in 2015, she came 21st with Aman Affair. <laughs> it's been really interesting to read the comments on Wee Wee Blogs. Our readers have lots of different opinions about whether getting rid of the national selection is a good thing or a bad thing. Sabrina writes, as much as I like national finals, I think both Spain and the UK did what they had to do at the moment. Let's hope the BBC and RTVE don't mess things up. You know, it's a good point. The UK has also apparently binned their national selection. Switzerland last year binned its national selection. National selections are expensive and they don't always result in the best song being chosen. Sometimes democracy doesn't work, guys. Sometimes behind closed door decisions, as with Switzerland, can lead to great results. Of course, we all love the drama in Spain's Eurovision selections. Who can remember the punch-up in 2017 when Manel Navarro won? The crowd and the jury, they were not happy with each other. This was beyond passionate. This was crazy. I'm not even joking. I thought the studio was going to explode after they announced Manel had won instead of Mirella. I loved Marella, la, 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 but our girl did not make it. In any case, Paulegen Godgarina, who always speaks his mind, he writes, OMG, I just realized this means no articles about Operacion Dorota this year. That show is boring. Okay, I don't think the show is boring. I enjoyed the soap opera aspect of it. And I also think that calling it Operacion Dorota, I think that means defeat, is perhaps a little harsh. I do take his point that the last two national selections have not resulted in high finishes. Miki came 22nd, Amaya Yalfred 23rd. But of course, there is hope. RTVE has said that they will choose a well-known artist and that they will announce this artist for Eurovision 2020 very soon. And let's just say that Spain has a lot of options to choose from. The top of basically anyone's ultimate wish list has to be Rosalia. She is 25 going on fabulous. We are talking nominee Latin Grammy Award Best New Artist. She is a big deal. If you haven't heard her music, please leave your cave and type in Melamente. 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 This song reminds me of Soldi from Mahmoud in a weird way. It's got this urban vibe, so urban, but just a little bit of pop and trap. She's a beautiful, stunning singer with this urban grit. It just works so well. She's been nominated for tons of war awards. I'm sitting here on her Wikipedia profile, OMG. MTV Europe Music Awards 2018 nominated for Best Spanish Act. She's up for a ton of awards at the Break Todo Awards, the Los 40 Music Awards, at the MTV Millennial Awards. She was nominated in everything Best Female Artist, Video of the Year, ship of the year. She is just amazing. Now, the odds of this happening, it's kind of slim to none. 
our girl is busy. As Nico says on WeWeBlogs.com, Rosalia is too successful and busy for Eurovision, unfortunately. I have a feeling that ESC has become a trash event for Spanish people since they barely achieve good results, like, for example, Germany in the 2000s. And that's really unfortunate because she, Rosalia, actually is capable of writing music. She is both a singer and a songwriter, and so often when artists write their own songs, look at Loic Natet, they can really slay properly and you feel that magic and conviction. Look at Duncan Lawrence, he wrote his song and you really felt it at Eurovision. Another artist we have to talk about is Christina Ramos. She recently revealed that she would be open to singing at the Eurovision Song Contest. This woman, she can do every genre and she's got about 22 octaves, most of which you have probably never heard of. Now, she won Spain's Got Talent, and she recently appeared on America's Got Talent, The Champions, and if I'm not mistaken, she's even on Britain's Got Talent um, right now. She is global. If you go into YouTube and type in Christina Ramos, America's Got Talent, The Champions, you're going to see a video, and the title is so funny. It is called Christina Ramos, Shocking Singer Performs Bohemian Rhapsody, America's Got Talent, The Champions. The reason this is so shocking is she starts off as this beautiful operatic singer and then, like Adurne, she throws off her robe and she starts singing rock, okay? Rock music. She goes from Malena Ernman to some form of a refined Lordy. It is absolutely phenomenal. I think Mel B put it best in her critique. She said, oh, you have this gorgeous goddess, delicate singer. And then all of a sudden a firecracker comes out. Howie Mandel said he was blown away. Heidi Klum said she loved it. And then Simon Cowell said she was out of this world and she is. We would be silly not to mention Ruth Lorenzo. She, of course, narrowly won the 2014 national selection in Spain. What was that called? Mira que yenba on Eurovision. This was a tight race between her and Briquette. Many people thought Briquette had the better song. Many others thought Ruth had the best voice. This was one of my earliest tastes of Eurodrama. The fandom went crazy. She came out on top, went to Eurovision in Copenhagen, and delivered a top 10 performance. She has got pipes. She, of course, was on UK X Factor. She famously covered Purple Rain. Simon Cowell loved her. Went back to Spain, has become a big star. I actually hung out with her last year uh, behind the scenes backstage at Germany's National selection Unser Lied für Israel. I was presenting points, was on the panel of 100, and she was one of the expert jurors on another panel, gave the points from Spain, aka from her. So nice, super fun. We hung out in her dressing room, we talked the gas, you know, told some secrets, shared some other secrets. In any case, she's devoted to the Eurovision fandom, and that's another reason she'd be such an amazing contestant. 99, I love that song. She's released hit after hit and she'd be very deserving of another chance. Another big favorite among us at Wubi Blogs and our readers is Lola Indigo. You may remember her from Operacion Triunfo 2017. I think she came 16th. She didn't do so well on the show, but that did not stop her. Almost immediately afterwards, she released this smash single, Ya no quiero na, ya no quiero na, ya no quiero na. She is like Isa from Melody Festival, but with a whole lot of Tabasco sauce, a whole lot of salsa. Spicy, flavorsome, absolutely amazing. This woman can sing, she can dance, she can write, she can really do it all. A triple threat. She was in Aitana's song, was it Makedo? What was it? Yeah, Makedo. It was so good. La Rena Soya, oh, La Rena Soya, oh, I'm back to Yano Quiero, oh. That song was banging two times platinum in Spain. And another name that our readers are floating on Twitter, Instagram, and the rest of our social media is, of course, Famous. Yes, that is his real name, Famous, born to be famous. He actually won the most recent edition of Operacion Triunfo, except he did not win the Eurovision Gala because he was paired with a song that just wasn't right. And this was one of, you know, the things that upset people last year is he was so keen on Eurovision. He really wanted to go. It would be such a huge honor for him to represent Spain. But then because he was given a song beneath him, he did not win the Eurovision Gala. Shout out to Mickey. I love Mickey. This is no shade on Mickey. Mickey also loves 
loved Eurovision. I'm just saying, famous one OT, and he could have gone to Eurovision if he had a good song. In any case, it's all super exciting, and we need to know what you think. Are you excited that Spain is saying bye to its national selection? Are you still going to watch OT when it airs next year? Do you think any of these artists could realistically represent Spain? Who is at the top of your wish list? Let us know here on Wee Wee Vlogs. In any case, that's what I think. Let us know what you think and be sure to follow us on all our social media. You can follow me on Instagram, William Lee Adams, or on Twitter, Willie Lee Adams, because somebody else took my handle. <laughs> Links are below and we'll see you later. Hasta luego. Bye. Adios.